Since the dawn of three-strip film in the 1930s, every cinematographer has been aware of the importance of using colour to create images. Different palettes can be constructed by using production design, introducing a look in the grade, or as we'll discuss today, with lighting. There are many reasons to use different coloured lighting when you shoot a scene, so today we'll go over five of them by looking at a few clips from popular movies as well as some footage I've lit using different hues. All of the lights I'll be using in this video are thanks to Nanlite, today's sponsor. So let's get started. Every environment that we walk around in has different frequencies of light bouncing around, which to both our eyes and cameras alike, read as colour. Therefore one of the most common motivations for illuminating with a vibrant hue is to replicate or supplement what we call practical sources, lights that are seen within the frame of the shot, such as a lamp. Here I've set the colour temperature of the practical in the background to 3200 Kelvin. Then to increase its intensity and direction, I've added a film light rigged above as a backlight. I've set it to the same colour temperature as the practical, supplementing the warm light that already naturally exists in the frame. A big trend now is for DPs to build practicals into sets or locations, which are usually RGB so that they can be adjusted to different hues to add accents of colour to the lighting. Those practicals could be Astera Titan tubes posing as fluorescent bulbs, RGB strips built into signage, or yellowly warm kitchen lights. As well as adding coloured practical sources that can be seen in shots, another idea linked to this is to create motivated colour lighting, where the light isn't necessarily seen in the shot, but the direction, colour and quality of the illumination still feels relatively realistic and motivated, like that light could be there, just outside the shot. One way to do this when shooting an interior is to shine a light through a window, with the imaginary motivation for it being that there is some kind of street lamp outside that window. Here I've used a hard source with a sodium vapour gel outside the window, which gets cut into strips of light and shadow by shutters. I've then used a cooler fill inside to motivate the dusky blue natural light outside and lift the ambience a bit. So although we don't see the exact source of light in the shot, it's probably within the bounds of reality to imagine that there might be an old sodium vapour street lamp outside this apartment window. Creating these extra imaginary sources is especially useful in night scenes for lifting the exposure so that there's enough light to be able to shoot. But there are also other psychological motivations for lighting with colour. When shooting exteriors, or interior scenes that take place during the day, the default colour temperature to light with and set the camera to is around 5600 Kelvin. If both the colour balance and light source match, you'll get normal looking natural colour, with white surfaces reading as white. Some filmmakers like to use this look as a base for daylight scenes, but then add smidges of more vivid colours to parts of the frame. Now I can't speak to the intention behind these lighting choices, but I have noticed that within certain contexts this can have an agitating effect. Take this location from The Bear. In different scenes there's this ever present just off camera red light which adds a different hue to the otherwise naturally lit space. It's subtle, but to me this visually ratchets up the tension just a tad, which suits the ongoing chaos and agitating tone that comes from the story and direction. Me, cousin. There's something about using a strong hue in contrast to the otherwise natural lighting, especially when it hits the skin tone of a character, which is slightly off-putting and brash. Uncut Gems is another film that does this, often mixing garish pink and off-green lighting with more traditional CCT sources. 
This gives skin quite a sickly, unhealthy tone, which psychologically adds to its already tense, off-kilter, chaotic atmosphere. So far, we've seen that lighting with color can be done for motivational purposes or to induce a psychological feeling, but it can also be used for more classically photographic or aesthetic reasons. More often than not, cinematographers like to use lighting to create different planes within the image. This creates an illusion that the 2D image has depth, feels more dimensional, and can be used to separate characters from the background to make them better stand out. They can do this by lighting different areas in the image, such as the foreground and the background, with different amounts of light or with different colors. The colors that cinematographers choose to place within the different planes of the image are also quite deliberate. Complementary colors are hues that sit at opposite ends of each other on the color wheel. These tend to be quite visually pleasing to the eye when they are paired together. This is why you often see films use a warm practical lamp in the background that counteracts with a cooler light on the subject in the foreground. Not only are these colors complementary and therefore aesthetically pleasing, but they are also placed in different planes or dimensions in the image. Cool, warm and cool. Increasing the feeling of depth and breaking up the subject from blending into the background. Some other complementary or often used color combinations besides cool and warm include a dark orange and green, red with a lighter blue or cyan, or a pink purple with a tungsten yellow. The lights I've been using to film the examples in this video have mainly been the Pavo Slim 60C and 120C, two new color capable LED fixtures from today's sponsor, Nanlite. These super lightweight and thin yet durable panels are great for any kind of overhead rigging situation. They come with an attached softbox which pops up to provide a diffuse spread to the source. It can also be easily folded away to fit in the case, which is a great time saver when lighting on the go. They are fully RGB capable, which means you can use them for a daylight or tungsten color balance, as well as dial in any color of light you can imagine. Probably my favorite feature is that they come with a pre-programmed selection of gel looks that mimic the color that you'd get from placing actual gels on a daylight or tungsten light. This allows me to quickly scroll through and select gel colors that I often use on lights like plus green, minus green, sodium vapor, or CTS, without needing to program in specific RGB values a big time saver. They're also compatible with a Nanlink app, which means you can control these lights wirelessly from the palm of your hand. Great for adjusting and balancing multiple fixtures quickly and easily and dialing in specific color values. This is an especially useful feature if your lights need to be rigged up in hard to access spots. If you want to check out more of Nanlite's great LED products, I've linked their site in the description below. There are many cinematographers, such as Vittorio Storaro, who like to talk about the psychology of lighting with certain colors. While the idea that different colors can be used to evoke specific emotions or themes is a whole other subject on its own, I think it's safe to acknowledge that as a whole, Color affects mood and how images are experienced by audiences. For that reason, cinematographers can sometimes deliberately exaggerate color outside the bounds of reality so that the world represents how the character feels rather than what it looks like in reality. This is something that DP Marcel Rev referred to as emotional realism when shooting Euphoria. As an example, let's take this bathroom space, which in real life is lit by a rather ugly overhead tungsten bulb, and apply two different lighting looks to it to evoke two different feelings. I'll start by rigging the 60C on a polecat, 
so that we don't see it in the reflection when shooting. It provides a nice downward top light onto the subject. Then I'll place a second source so that it shines through the window, adding ambience and a different plane of light on the back wall. For the first lighter, brighter, more upbeat tone and look, I'll set the overhead source to a 5600 Kelvin daylight temperature, with a layer of diffusion to soften its intensity. I'll set the outside hard COB light to 5600 Kelvin, with an added quarter CTS gel to give it a warm morning glow. For the second, harsher, darker tone, I'll remove the diff on the 60C to make the downlight harder and set it to a fluorescent green gel look. I'll then remove the CTS gel on the light outside and instead warm it up to 2700 Kelvin so it takes on a tungsten look. I'll then decrease the camera's exposure and balance the lights through dimming their intensity values to get a look that feels much dingier and far emotionally darker in tone than the first lighting setup. By just tweaking the color, quality and intensity of the two sources, we can create two looks that put the character in a radically different emotional space. Apart from all the above reasons for using color, it can also be used because, well, it just looks kind of cool. One of the easiest ways to create a more visually stylized look with lighting is by using different hues. This is often done in short form content like music videos, where realistic lighting can be thrown out the window and color is used to elevate the visuals and inject an energy into them using a stylized color palette rather than a naturalistic one. It's also a favorite party trick of YouTubers. Light the background wall with one RGB color, then place another color RGB source that only illuminates the subject in the foreground, and just like that, you're a YouTuber. The reason this works comes back to the idea of using complementary color and lighting different planes in the frame to separate the subject from the background. I'm sure there are lots of other reasons to use color in lighting, which you can chat about down in the comments. As always, thanks for supporting the channel by watching, liking, and especially to the patrons who keep this channel going with their support. Otherwise, until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.